Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. This picture utilizes a type of rim lighting, sometimes called dark field illumination. It can be used with a range of subjects and is very effective with transparent or translucent objects, such as the soap bubbles in this picture. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so starting with the camera then. I've got a full frame uh, digital SLR, uh, and out of the front of that I've put a 24 to 70 uh, zoom lens. On the top of the camera I have a flash sync trigger, which is also capable of controlling the energy uh, in the studio heads. The whole thing is tethered into Capture One software. That way it's easy to show the results as we go along. So, in order to illuminate uh, the soap bubbles, I'm going to need uh, a light source. And the majority of the light needs to be coming from behind the subject to make this work. So here we are then. This is a uh, four foot by six foot uh, soft box, which is going to form uh, the light source for these pictures. Uh, now at the back of that, I have a Profoto uh, D2 studio head. Uh, which is uh, a 1,000 joules, um, which will be ample for uh, this sort of application. OK, so with all this uh, in place, the next thing I'm going to do uh, is just put a uh, studio stand, like this one, just at the front here, just to give me something to focus on. So if I just pop that about there somewhere, this is going to be the area that I'm going to compose the picture around. OK, so next thing to do would just be to compose the picture. So I'll just look through the viewfinder. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is just wind that up a bit on this tripod, like so, just so that the light is in the centre of the frame. There should do it. Now I'm going to zoom that all the way in to the 70 mil end, like so, and finally we'll just focus that up, just like that. There we go, and the next thing to do, just turn the camera on. And the software has recognised the camera, and we'll just have a look at the settings that I've got on here. So I have a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, which is the flash sync speed for that camera. Uh, the ISO is set to 100, and we've got an aperture of f8. So just with these settings, I'll just grab an image without any flash on, uh, just to make sure that we don't get any contamination. There we go. So, uh, completely black image, so there's no contamination from the house lights. Right, so it's time to uh, turn the uh, flash on, uh, which I can do remotely. So I'll just turn the flash sync trigger on, select the head, and just turn that on. There we go. Now initially the uh, energy in the head is set to an arbitrary level, about halfway along the scale. Um, so we'll just grab an image just to make sure everything's working. So there we are, yeah, that's all working all right, and we've got quite a nice illumination of this light stand. OK, so this is showing that everything is working, and we have the beginnings of our setup. OK, but we said at the beginning that this is um, rim lighting, or dark field illumination, uh, and quite obviously this isn't a dark field. So what I need to do is add a flag in here, of black cloth, so that um, the background to the image will be that uh, piece of black cloth. There we are, that's in uh, something like the right position now. Uh, and you should be able to see that this is extremely close to the softbox. Uh, and I've done this on purpose, so that um, I've got the maximum amount of area of light around the outside going to be able to come along and go into uh, this area where the subject will be, in our case the bubbles. I'll show you what I mean as we go along. 
OK, so with that in place, what I'll do now is just grab another image uh, just to see what we get. So you can see in this that we're actually starting to get there. We now have a dark background and the subject, in this case the lighting stand, is rimlit. You can see that there is a rim of light all the way around it. But what you should also be able to notice is that as I move this cursor around the picture area here, the numbers at the top here are showing a value at that point. And nowhere in here is actually black. So in order to make that uh, black and to generally increase the uh, contrast in the image, what I'm going to do is use an aperture mask. Now an aperture mask can sound um, very complicated, but it isn't really. It's literally a piece of card with a hole cut in it. Uh, and this hole is cut to the same ratio as the size of the sensor in the camera. So what I'm going to do is just place this on this C stand. But I'm going to make sure that I place the black side of the card towards the subject. That way it will give me the maximum uh, contrast. OK, so we'll just pop that on there. And now I'll just bring this up. And the idea here is that this is at just the right place so that it will block out all of the white area on the uh, softbox here and just show the black bit in the middle. So there's a bit of trial and error in getting this in the right place. So just looking through the viewfinder, I'll just move the card into position. There, somewhere around there somewhere, I think. OK, I will give that a try. There we are, that seems to have worked. Uh, you can now see from the numbers at the top there that this is very much darker. It's almost completely black. And if I just compare that to what we had before, that's without the aperture mask, and that's with it. So it generally increases the contrast within the image. OK, so the next thing we're going to need, of course, are some bubbles. So here I have an industrial strength um, bubble machine. This will produce uh, quite a lot of bubbles uh, and that will make it a lot simpler to build up the image. But if you don't have anything quite as big as this, uh, don't worry about it because you'll see from the way that I build up the image that you can use a much smaller machine uh, to produce your bubbles uh, and then just stack more images together when we come to do the bit in Photoshop. I'll show you as we go along. OK, so let's just get this in position. So I'm just going to push this right to the side here, like so, something like that. The idea being that I'm trying to get this just in front of uh, the softbox, uh, aiming precisely at this point. So something like that. OK. And because these bubbles are uh, quite soapy and very messy, I'm just going to put an old uh, cloth down on the floor here. And we'll just move this out of the way. So with all that in position, I'll now turn the bubble machine on and we'll capture a few images. There we go. So the bubbles are starting to come through. We'll just grab one or two just to test. There we are. So the idea here is that I'm capturing quite a few different images uh, of bubbles in different positions. And then later on when we go to Photoshop, we'll compose them all together to make the final image. OK, so that should be enough. Can turn the bubble machine off now. And for the capture, that's it. 
there is nothing else. Uh, so the next stage will be to go to Photoshop uh, and do the post-production. So here we are in Photoshop. And of all the captures, uh, I've loaded up these nine images, which are all these. And as you can see, they're all bubbles in different positions, like so. So what I want to do now is make um, one file of all of those images. And the way I'm going to do that is get Photoshop to make me a stack of all of these uh, separate files. So go to File, come down to Scripts, load files into Stack, add Open Files, and just click on OK. And what this will do is put each file on a separate layer, like so. But as they are at the moment, you can only see one at a time. So in order to be able to see all of them, what I'm going to do is go from the top one here to one up from the bottom. I'm going to hold down the Shift key on the keyboard and just left click the mouse to select all of those layers. Then I'm going to change the blending mode from normal to lighter color. So as you can see, these have different effects as we go up and down them. But I think lighter color will give me the, uh, the one that I want. So I just click on that. And that has made all of the separate layers visible at the same time. So as we said earlier, if you only have a small bubble machine, then you can build this up with many separate pictures. OK, so what you might also be able to see now that I've got all those layers turned on is that you have quite a lot of speckles in the uh, background of the picture. They are caused by uh, bits of the soap liquid uh, coming out of the bubble machine. Uh, and as we've added all the layers together, we've also added all of these uh, tiny little specks. So what I'm going to do next is add a layer mask to each individual layer. So I'll just click on the top one, add a layer mask, and so on, all the way down to the bottom, like so. And I'm also just going to add another layer, like so. And I'm just going to move that right to the very bottom and fill that with black. So just making sure that the foreground color is set to black. Just use the paint bucket to fill that layer. Right, so now I can go down and just turn off all the layers apart from the one that I'll be working on, which is this one here. So I'll select that mask. And what I'm going to do is just with a paintbrush, I'll make that a little bit bigger. So right click the mouse, change the size, and change the hardness to something a little harder. There we are, like that. And I'm just going to paint out on the mask all the bits apart from the actual soap bubbles that we want. Now I'm doing this relatively quickly. You could take a bit more care, but you get the idea. There, so once you've completed that, all you need to do is go to the next layer and do the same thing again. So this time I'll turn off that one. So we're just doing these one layer at a time. Select that mask and just paint out everything apart from the bubbles that you actually want. And again, once this is complete, move up to the next one and all the way up to the top, like so. So with all of those masks now done, I can turn all the layers back on again and bring all the bubbles back, like so. So now with that task complete, um, what I might do is just globally um, saturate the color. Uh, so the way I'm going to do that is just making sure that the very top layer is selected. I'm just going to add an adjustment layer. And I'm just going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And on this layer, I'm going to just uh, adjust the amount of saturation in the whole image. As I turn this up, you can see that we're now starting to get some color into, uh, into all these bubbles. Yeah, that seems to be working very well. 
might just add a tiny bit more. It's very easy to go over the top with this, uh, so I don't really want to do that. But uh, about there looks good to me. Of course, the other thing that you can do with this is clip it to a particular layer. So, for instance, if I just click on this little icon down the bottom here, what that has done is put this adjustment just on the very top layer, the one that's directly underneath it. You can see that this bubble here is the only one, and this one down here, are the only ones which are actually affected. But if I now click this, I can affect them all. Uh, so should you want to, you could go through and pick a particular layer. For instance, we'll go to this one down here. Uh, and add an adjustment layer to that. Hue and saturation again. Clip it to that particular layer. And now I can saturate just that layer. So you should be able to see that um, this in the center here and this one down here are getting affected by that. Uh, and if you wanted to, you could also change the hue. So as we go through, you can change the colors for those particular bubbles caught on that layer. In fact, I might leave that like that. It looks quite nice. OK. So with those bits now done, uh, I think it just remains to add a crop to the image. So I'll just click on the crop tool. Now mine's going to be destined for the video, so I'm doing 16 by 9. Uh, but just pick something which uh, works for you. I'm just going to bring this in just a little bit on the edges, like that. There we are. Let's click on the little tick icon at the top. And there we have it. A very effective piece of abstract art, I think. Just made out of a composite of bubbles on separate layers. And by using dark field illumination, the whole image has come together very well. OK, well, I hope you like watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. Don't forget to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.